Welcome back y'all. Welcome back to my video. And today we're going to be talking about how to keep faith when you have a chronic illness or any type of disease, illness, something that goes on for your entire life. And I have a chronic illness and I have, I actually have ulcerative colitis. I always say Crohn's disease because for the longest time they thought that I had ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, but through more testing and all of that, I actually just have UC. And so um, if I refer to it as Crohn's, it's just because I've always called it that my entire life, but I actually have ulcerative colitis or a mix of both. I don't know. They've changed, my doctors have changed their minds about me so many times so you know maybe in a year if you're watching this video i have crohn's again who freaking knows okay um can i say that word in like a christian video i don't know but this is real that's just how guys i say that word mm, sorry okay so what is crohn's disease what is crohn's if you're watching this video and maybe you have a chronic illness but it's not crohn's and you just want to know or if even if you don't have a chronic illness and you just kind of want to get an insight of okay what is she talking about so crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis both of them are inflammatory bowel diseases and so essentially the my rectum and my colon and at times my large and small intestines become inflamed which cause a lot of bad symptoms and i had it all the way where my entire intestines have been inflamed in the last couple of years it's just been my colon and rectum but when i was first diagnosed i had the whole the whole shebang it was terrible so essentially when those areas become inflamed what happens is you have really really bad diarrhea you have blood in your stools meaning when you go to the bathroom it's blood you have constipation you the worst of it for me i can't speak for everyone because everyone who has uc or crohn's is different but for me the worst absolute worst is the cramping that i get i get the worst most painful cramping that the only way to relieve is to go sit in the bathroom oh and hey listen y'all this video is just going to be a little bit tmi i don't feel like i can be as real as i can if i'm just not being honest you know the things that i deal with are not pretty and they're not fun which i'm sure that's like for any person who has uc and crohn's or any other type of chronic illness and so when i'm talking about how to keep faith i also have to be very upfront with y'all and say you know this is what i deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and it may be tmi it may be gross but you know that's just what it is this is my life and if if i'm going to tell you how i keep god in the mix and how i keep faith through it all then i'm also going to tell you you know how bad it how bad how terrible it is you know so yeah, I get really, really bad cramping. And the only thing that will, you know, alleviate that would be like going to the bathroom. Then you also can't control sometimes when you have to go to the bathroom. You lose a significant amount of magnesium and iron because you're bleeding all the time. You can swell really bad. And I mean, those are most of my symptoms. You can get a lot more. Some people have, you know, really, really bad headaches. One thing that I get is I get really, really fatigued, and so I always joke around that I have to have like a nap a day, which I don't actually have to have, but I get very, very, very fatigued, and I can be tired after sleeping a full eight hours, and it's just because I'm losing so much blood, and I'm cramming so much, and my body spends so much of its time in pain that it's just so tired. The only thing that I want to do is lay down on the couch and you know, just relax if I'm not having to be in the bathroom. When I was diagnosed, I had it really, really bad. I had it as a very severe form. And throughout my life, it's actually gotten better. Thank, thank the Lord. Alrighty, so when was I diagnosed? I was diagnosed at 13. I was in eighth grade. And for about a year, I was having blood in my stool and I didn't understand like no one like especially young girls like I don't know about guys maybe maybe like teenage boys they're gross but young girls don't really talk about like their poop <laughs> I just said poop on YouTube um young girls don't really talk about that like that's not something that I was like calling up my friends and being like so um you know I flirted with Jimmy at my locker oh and you know there's blood in my stool like no you don't you don't talk about it so for about a year I was bleeding 
And I didn't tell anyone, not a soul. I think I told my mom or dad like in passing, but I'm always like something that I still do today is I very much like will mention something and then act like it's not very important. So I'll say like this really big life event and then I'll just like move on like, oh, whatever, who cares? And so like I think when I told my parents, I was like, oh yeah, I have blood in my soul. And then like just kind of went on to the next topic and so I think they were more thinking like okay she's like on her period or like something like that and it wasn't until I actually started experiencing more symptoms so it started out just being the blood in my stool and then it moved on to the severe cramping and I lost a significant amount of weight um I was smaller to begin with but I actually got down to about I think 90 pounds and I was 13 I was small if I can find a picture I'll insert it I don't have a lot of pictures from that time but if I do I will try to insert it but I was very 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 small and it was I, I wasn't just skinny like no that wasn't the issue I was malnourished my face was sunken in I was white as a ghost I and I even went to like the tanning bed at the time because I wanted to be tan and nothing, nothing worked. I was so malnourished. My eyes were sunken in. My uh, lower eyelids were just like, or whatever this, I can't, my, I'm spacing. <laughs> my under eye, there we go, um, was like so dark. It was almost purple. I was so tiny. I mean, I literally looking at pictures now, you'd be like, okay, yeah, she's about to die. And so eventually I complained to my parents and I went to a specialist and they were like, yeah, um, she's like three days away from dying. Get her into the hospital, get her a blood transfusion and we're gonna figure out what's wrong. And so I remember I was 13 years old and I had my first colonoscopy. That's fun. And that was how this all started for me. And so from that point on, I have UCM Crohn's disease and it's really defined my life in many ways, but then in many other ways it hasn't. I would say that when I was 13, what they did, like, ah, uh, that was the worst it's ever been, was right when I was diagnosed. And I went on steroids, I went on huge amounts of steroids, prednisone, I was on Imuran, like immune deficient medications. I was on a ton of medicine. I actually was so sick for about a year. I was homeschooled because I was so sick that I like physically could not go to school every day. And I remember like for an eighth grader, especially an eighth grade girl, that was like the worst thing in the world. And I had insomnia. I craved bacon all the time. I had like issues with my hormones that I couldn't even understand because I was so young and I was on all these medications and you know my face was huge I was just it was not a fun time but after about a year and a half all of the medications worked and I went into remission and so I'm putting myself I think I'm like midway through my freshman year at this point and life's okay I've lost a lot of the weight that I gained from my steroid use when I was really really sick and I'm just back at it as a teenage girl uh, unfortunately the effects of having Crohn's was really hard to deal with. Everyone knew, oh, Lacey was sick. Lacey had to be taken out of school. Everyone knew that, you know, I almost died essentially and people wanted to ask me about it or then people would say like, well, what are the symptoms? And you know, like I mentioned earlier, a teenage girl does not want to talk about going to the bathroom. And then I also have to deal with the fact that here I am in high school and I have a disease where I have to constantly go to the bathroom and I'll be at school and I have to figure out, okay, I have to get a hall pass. And my school was great in the fact that I had like an unlimited bathroom pass, but okay, people would wonder, they'd be like, why does Lacey have a bathroom pass? Why can Lacey go to the bathroom? You know, like every time that she wants to, or like, I remember it was always a big deal at the beginning of the year. Every single teacher I had, you know, cause in high school you have more than one teacher. They got an email from my mom and my guidance counselor saying, Lacey has Crohn's disease. If she asks to go to the bathroom, she has to go. If this happens, I remember I was really into cheerleading and that was like my whole life was cheerleading. And I was on speech team too. Those two things were like my whole life. And I couldn't do everything that you needed to do and cheer because of how sick I was all the time and the medications that I were on. And so I remember a couple of girls being like, why, you know, you would run the laps 
uh, and they'd be like, why isn't Lacey running today? And it would just be like, my coaches knew, and they were so understanding, but it, well, as a teenage girl, I wasn't just openly talking about this. And so those are kind of things that I went through back then. And so, like I said, I got into a little bit of remission, but I've never had a remission last more than a couple months. I've always gotten sick after like two or three months and gone right back to it. Sometimes it's really bad. Sometimes it's okay. And it just, it's off and on. You know, I'll have a good day. I'll have a bad day. So I'm 28 now. So I was diagnosed at 13 and I'm 28 now always had Crohn's. I've never really in the last, I don't know, what, 15, 16 years, I've never had a prolonged period of remission. Most of the time I'm sick every other day, if not every day. It has affected my work. It has affected my life goals. It's affected my physical health. It's affected everything. And so the reason why after this whole shebang that I just went on talking about with y'all, and I'm sure you're like, oh, well, she's complaining about cheerleading um there's a point to this and the point is is that as an adult now I have the strongest faith that I've ever had in my entire life and yet today in my everyday I am directly affected by this chronic illness hi y'all so um I just wanted to come on and do like a quick little um update on Crohn's since I uh want to be documenting kind of like what it's like and so I'm getting ready to go to work I actually need to hurry up and get in there <laughs> um, but um, up until about well still still um, so an hour before work up until now uh, full-on Crohn's attack it's not been fun not been fun and the clock like I just watched the clock like get closer and closer to the time that I have to leave for work and it's stressful. It definitely um, stress makes the Crohn's worse. And then I'm sitting there like in the bathroom, like going to the bathroom. Sorry, DMI, but this is Crohn's. And like trying to put on my makeup, trying to brush my hair, like just trying to get ready for work with a full blown Crohn's attack. So that's just my life. I know I say it like so, ah, I'm so, but I, that's just me. I'm just like a happy-go-lucky person, but underneath the kind of like happy facade of like what I'm saying, it's honestly terrible and it's stressful and it's just not fun. Coming at you today, I am cleaning. I look a mess, but I mean, who gets like dressed up to clean? Uh, but it's taking me longer than normal. So I live in a small apartment with my husband and, you know, to like deep clean the whole house usually takes, um, I would say like two hours, to like deep clean. And today I'm going on five. And the reason for that is because every five to 10 minutes I have to go to the bathroom because I'm having a really, really bad Crohn's day. So... I had plans for today. I had things I wanted to do after I deep cleaned the house. And it's coming on late afternoon and I don't know if those are gonna get done. So just kind of in my life with Crohn's. I am finishing this house. Like that's on Saturdays, that's what I do. I deep clean the house. And so if I do anything today, it's that. But it's definitely taking me a lot longer. And I really just wanna lay down. But when this is your daily life, you can't just, like, lay down. That's not how it works. So, see you next time. Bye. And it is very, very easy for me to think that God has forgotten me or that God is punishing me or that God wants me to have this for a reason. You know, we always love to use that in the Christian faith. Everything happens for a reason. And to be quite frank, I think when you say that to someone who has a chronic illness, it's insulting and it's very condescending. I understand and there are things in my life that this illness has given to me that I know God did for the best. So I'm not saying that I disagree with it. Everything God does, he does for the good. However, I don't think that that's a great saying to say to someone, especially someone who deals with chronic illness. It's, it's just not. What does life look like for me now? I talked a little bit about how it affected me in high school, but I'm an adult now. Well, 
it depends on the day. It. I just got back from vacation. My mom and my aunt and I went to Boston. And just to give you kind of an insight into what that's like. Typically, I'm sick in the morning, and it'll kind of be really, really bad right in the morning, and I'll get better and better as the day goes on. That's not all the case. Sometimes I can be sick the entire day. Sometimes I can get sick midway through the day. The majority of the time, though, it's in the morning. And so what would happen with me on vacation, I'd wake up before everyone else. I would know that it's just going to happen. It would happen. We would have to delay our plans until I was able to at least come out of the bathroom for more than 10 minutes at a time. And then we would try to see what all we could accomplish. And it's extremely stressful and it also is very you just are so filled with so much guilt because you don't want to affect the time of the people around you and so one of the things that it affects me is I don't travel with people that don't really know me that well or at least don't know what it's like to be with me in my Crohn's disease so I travel with my aunt my mom my husband and my sister and a couple close friends but besides that I don't really like to travel and the reason why is because they just don't understand so we're walking around Boston or you're walking around anywhere maybe it's Nashville or wherever it is you know and you constantly as someone who has UC or Crohn's are thinking to yourself where's the next bathroom because it's so important that you know where the next bathroom is. If you don't know where that next bathroom is, what's going to happen when you can't hold it anymore? You know, that's like the worst thing in the world to happen to someone who has UC or Crohn's is not being able to find that bathroom. And when you're traveling around the city or going from place to place, I mean, the last thing most people think about is, okay, where's the bathroom they just they think about it when they have to go to the bathroom but me I don't think about it when I have to go to the bathroom or when I have to go I think about it from the moment I leave my house to wherever it is we're going to the next place I'm always constantly thinking about where the next bathroom is I'm thinking about okay we're gonna go on a hike here so I'm gonna stop at the rest station or the gas station and then after the hike I'll stop back at the gas station and then we'll stop back at the apartment or Airbnb or hotel and I'll be able to go there like it's always in my head about where the next bathroom is and that's incredibly stressful it's incredibly depressing and it really is not a good time and it's not a good time to people who don't understand that you have Crohn's or you see because they're constantly wondering why this girl has to go to the bathroom all the time they're constantly wondering like what is with her or they'll say things like um but what's taking her so long you know why does she take so long to get ready i don't take that long to get ready maybe i'm saying i'm getting ready and really i'm on the toilet and I just don't want to vocalize that. Now, if I'm with people I trust, I totally will. But if I'm with just like friends that I'm not that close with, that don't really know the ins and outs of my bowel movements, you know, because who do you really want to tell that to? Um, it, it gets difficult. Yeah. Or if I'm going to work, um, there's been so many times I've had to call into work. There's been so many times that I've been at work and I work in the service industry. I'm a server. So I can't exactly just like go to the bathroom when I have a full section of tables. Like that's just not a thing. And so it's like, I have to work through the pain. I have to work through the cramps and I'm sure some of y'all can relate. I know that I am not alone. And so that's kind of like the everyday. I don't want to go too uh, into that just because I think I've kind of summed it up. If you have any questions about my day-to-day -day or you want to know more, I'll make a separate video or something. Um, I do want to get the bulk of the video about how I, you know, I have faith in it. And so um, that's kind of a little bit of day-to-day. -day. But when it comes to my faith and how I live a faithful life in a strong have, keep a strong relationship with Christ through having this it goes up and down I'll be completely honest you know there's times where I'm in the bathroom and I'm just crying because I'm in so much pain and I don't know when it's gonna stop that I'm mad at God like I will 100% be honest with you and tell you that I definitely have those moments I have those moments where I don't understand there was nothing that I did that gave me this disease I it's a chronic illness I was actually born with it and it didn't come to light until I turned like 13 and there's nothing I did that made me deserving of this. There's nothing that my doctor's been able to point out and that's just that. 
And so there's there's times where I'm so angry and in so much pain and crying that I'm, I'm very mad and I don't understand. But then I always remember that everything passes. And so there's a lot of times, like right now filming this video, I don't have any pain going on. I had pain earlier in the day, but it's passed and I am fully, I have a lot of energy, I'm not bleeding, I'm not cramping, and I'm able to focus and film this video. And that's how I keep my faith, is I just remember in those moments that everything will pass and that God is always with me. And one thing that I always try to remember is that everybody has things that, you know, make life unfair. And maybe it's their upbringing, maybe it's their family life, maybe it's their financial life, maybe it's an illness, maybe it's a mix of everything, but everybody has like their cross to bear. You know, you hear that a lot. And I really think that that's true. There are things in my life that I've had very easy, easily come to me, you know, and there are things that other people that I have very easily have struggled with. And so I just always put that in perspective. It's, you know, this is what God has, I don't think he's ever given it to me, but I think that in this world that's full of sin, things happen. There was some reason I have this chronic illness and I just have to take it at face value for what it's worth. Try not to blame God. I will talk to him. There's so many times that I'll just pray while I'm sick. And I'll say, like, I don't understand. And, you know, I don't think God's ever really told me why. I just know that he loves me. And I just take comfort in the fact that I know that the Lord is true and he is good and he loves me. And that there's going to be a day when I get to heaven where I will not have any of these problems ever again. And so I take a lot of comfort in that. And, you know, no, I'm not looking forward to, to that. I mean, I am looking forward to that, but I'm not looking forward to, like, dying is what I'm trying to say. But, you know, I I do take comfort in knowing that I'm going to spend eternity with a great health and without cramping and without bleeding and without mood swings and without steroids that make my weight go up and down. Like, I'm going to live in eternity without those things. And that gives me a lot of comfort. And I love reading God's word because, you know, he is always true and he is never changing. And that gives me so much strength is to know that the same God of yesterday is the same God of today and tomorrow and he is never changing and he's never going to falter and he's always there for me and one thing is I always think about how true God is and I can't speak for everyone with a chronic illness obviously but I always am okay when I need to be okay so an example of this is I was in Boston just a few weeks ago and we had a city tour that we had booked with a private tour guide so it wasn't like a refundable thing like this was with someone who was going to show up at a meeting spot with us walk with us it was a small group and we had the whole it was an eight hour tour and there was no refunds I mean we were an hour away or an hour away from having to meet this person and I was full blown in the bathroom like crone sick and we only had one bathroom in the place that we were staying at which y'all I cannot go somewhere where there's only one bathroom like I just can't I just can't I digress Anyway, <laughs> so I'm full on sick and I'm just stressing because A, I'm sick and then B, I have an hour and the time's just like going on and going on and then it's 30 minutes and then it's 20 minutes and we're about to meet the person and I'm just sick and I'm sick and I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to, we're going to have to cancel or I'm going to have to stay here by myself and my aunt and my mom are going to have to go without me. Like I'm, I ruined this day. Like this whole thing that we were planning to do today with going to the North End and seeing Boston, it's ruined. And I stopped having my symptoms as soon as we met the tour guide. And that's something that God has always done for me is that when the time comes, he alleviates my symptoms. And I wouldn't say that it is automatic. It's a slow progression. Like, I don't think he just, like, comes down and, like, twinkles, you know, God dust on me. I mean, maybe he does. I don't know. It, it, I still, like, when the tour guide came, I was cramping a little bit, but I didn't have to go into the bathroom. And then by 30 minutes into the tour, I didn't have any cramping at all. And I was okay. And I survived the whole day without any symptoms. And so that's something that God has always done for me. And, you know, there, there have been times I've, I've been sick through things, but the things in my life that really matter, that I have been heavily stressed out about, he has always provided a way for me to 
be okay. Whether I'm sick at work, it's happened so many times that maybe I'm 30 minutes out from work and I come in and I'm sick and it's like either we're really, really slow at work and I don't get a table for an hour and I can deal with it in the bathroom or he stops it right then and there and I can go into work and I can have my tables. So I can't give you a reason for that, but I always pray. I'm always talking to him. I'm asking him to take care of me, and he always does. And I know that may not be helpful for y'all because y'all are probably thinking, okay, well, that's great. He doesn't do that for me. And I would just say, like I, like I said earlier, it's not something that just like is the fairy dust. It, it happens, but I always know that he will take care of me, and I will be okay, and this too shall pass. That's, that's the main thing that helps me keep my faith is I know that God's going to find a way out of it for me. I'm going to be okay. I will not be cramping. I will not be in the bathroom forever. I will eventually walk out and I will eventually be able to do whatever it is that I wanted to do. So yeah, that's that's the main way that I keep my faith and stay strong through this. I don't have a reasoning why I think God gave it to me. I don't have a reasoning and to like tell you like, oh, this is how you're going to stay strong. Remember, everything happens for a reason. And, oh, you know, God only did this to make you stronger. You know, in many cases, I've actually become not as strong because of the fact that I have this illness and it's kind of something that has affected a I have a dream of running a marathon and every time I've really gotten into training and been able to run long distances my Crohn's have has attacked me like mid run and I've never been able to finish one and so it's like I wouldn't say I'm stronger because of it I would say that it's made me into a better lacy and that I have more sympathy for things that maybe I wouldn't have had sympathy for prior to having this disease so if you're looking for some like crazy answer, I don't really have one. The only thing I can say is that everything passes and there are moments of my life where I'm in incredible pain and then there are also moments of my life where I feel the spirit and I am okay. And I have more moments where I am okay than I have moments where I can't get through or I'm questioning God and that's how I keep my faith is I remember that Everything passes, and God is always true. Maybe not in that very moment do I feel like it, but he always is, and I will always come out of it okay. And so that's something that I've always kept my faith in. And like I said earlier, you know, I know that I'm going to have eternity. This life, however long I live, is not forever, but I have eternity with God, and I will not have Crohn's disease forever. I will have a healthy body in heaven with the Lord for eternity, and that's where I get my strength from. So... I feel like I could talk about this for like so long because I've had it for my entire life. So it's like, I think like, oh, mention this, mention this, mention this, but it's like, oh my gosh, this could be like seven videos, seriously, just talking about like how this affects me and how my day-to-day -day life is, you know, it's, it's just so, it's so much. So if I forget things, maybe I'll make another video about it if people want to see it or if like I come across something that I want to make a second video about. But yeah, I just have to, I, I can ramble about it because you're talking about something that you know, and trust me, I know Crohn's, I know pain, like I'm, I'm there. <laughs> Alrighty, so that's just a little bit of insight into my chronic illness and how I live with Crohn's disease and how it's affected my day-to-day -day life and also how I've relied on God to get through it. If you have any questions, I would love to start a conversation about this and maybe learn a bit about you and how God has brought you um, through hardships in your life, whether it be a chronic illness or any type of other hardship. And if you have any questions that you want to ask me, I'm totally an open, open book, especially when it comes to Crohn's. Like I said, I could make so many videos about this and I it's hard for me to even keep focused because there's so many points that I could say about it. So if you have any questions or you want to know anything, I don't even care if it's TMI or gross, I will totally answer them for you. So let me know below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!